Hey guys and welcome to The Buying View. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. In this particular video, um, Brazo, or as some of people know him as uh, Hansan Salahimovic, I believe is how you say it, uh, has been speaking uh, yesterday. I was actually supposed to put it out yesterday, but didn't get around to it. Uh, so I do apologise, but we did still upload yesterday. So if you haven't checked out those videos, go check those ones out. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing this beautiful, beautiful kit. There will be a review for this kit, similar to the one that I did uh, the uh, other day, the home kit, uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday the 26th um, of April at 2pm UK time. I'm not too sure what that is in other people's time, but that will be out. I'll make sure that I uh, get that video out for you guys. But let's talk about what uh, Hansan has to say. Uh, if you guys do go on to enjoy the video, smash the thumbs up. If you are new, hit the subscribe button down below. And um, without further ado, uh, we may as well just get into into it. So, um, first thing that's being put out there is uh, about the Champions League exit. Uh, and he says, of course, we are all uh, angry because we uh, had a big chance without being disrespectful to anyone. I really thought we had a very good chance. We weren't uh, good in Spain. The 1-0 defeat was deserved. Uh, we didn't manage to win at home. Uh, that hurts. We uh, can't be losing that. But we have to look ahead. Uh, and then um, he was talk he's talking about... Um, Dortmund complaining to the referee yesterday. He said FC Bayern was simply the better team yesterday. Uh, refereeing decisions aside, we were simply better in the first and second um, halves of this. Um, oh, in the first and second um, game of the season. Yeah, we did the double over them, didn't we? So we, I, I can't disagree with that one. Uh, and then he spoke about Nar Guzman and he says... Uh, I'm incredibly happy for the coaching team uh, to have won their first title. Julian at 34 is uh, best coaching talent in in the world, in my opinion. We got him and his staff to define an error here. It's a, a learning process for him and for everyone, um, which some people would take that good and bad, um, you know, um, in the fact that it's a learning process because you shouldn't be learning at this club. You know, I'm all for, I'm all for Nagusman. I'm, I'm not one him out or anything like that, but this badge means everything to me and it probably does to you as well. And he shouldn't be learning on the job, generally shouldn't, but yeah. Uh, and then he also says, um, co uh, cooperation is very good. Um, he is a very communicative and open coach. I enjoy working with him. He lives football. The players are aware uh, that he has a lot um, of uh, know-how and are all involved in the process, um, which it definitely is a process. Uh, and then um, he was also uh, talking about the competition of the Bundesliga. He says, uh, we have a lot of, uh, we have, where was I? We have a lot of respect uh, for the work of Borussia Dortmund. Of course, they are the number. They are the number one rival. What's happening in uh, in Leipzig and Leverkusen is great. We want that, and we want and we need that pressure. We don't always want to be twenty points up. Um, which again, you know, I know that various legends and various people have been speaking, saying, you know, it's not good that Bayern have won the title already. Which I get. In a certain sense, but at the same time, you know, can we not discredit Dortmund in the fact that, you know, yes, they have lost games that they probably realistically should have won. But look at the goals for, you know, they're still there. Look at the points, you know, we're not 50, 60 points ahead or anything like that. You know, that would be a dis dis you know, disgrace. But, you know, I, I, I do feel like certain things need to chill out a little bit. But I do understand about the competition of the Bundesliga. Of course, you know, it would it would be even more intense and make the Bundesliga even more better if it were to go down to the wire and that on the last last game day, the last match day of the Bundesliga, you see if Bayern win or you see if Dortmund win, of course. Um, but that's on Dortmund, realistically. Bayern can only do what Bayern do. Simple as that. You know, you can't say that we bought all of their talent. Of course, talent's come over to us. We've got some talent's gone over to them. But, 
yeah, that's just my take on it. But yeah, uh, and then he also spoke about Leroy Sane. He says, Leroy is an incre incredibly talented player who has all the qualities and mental strength um, he has to deliver now when he's showing good body language. That's good. But if uh, he doesn't, that's not good. I don't want to see this. I spoke to him about it. Um, he has potential... But I want to see that on the pitch. We spoke several times. Uh, the people in charge, the coach, the players, everyone except him um, to explode on the pitch. It's hard to say why he's not performing um, as expected. He's he's listening well. Uh, I hope he'll do it. Um, yeah, man. The, the body language of Leroy Sane in the past month or so hasn't been the best. I'm not going to lie. It hasn't been the best. I love Sane. I love the whole team. But you know what I mean? Like, Sane is one of my favourite players. He's just an absolute don. When we got him for the price we got him for, absolute bargain. But he definitely does. But he definitely does have um, some attitude problems. I don't know if attitude problem is the word, by the way. I really don't. Um, I think probably more the fact that, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. He's a young lad playing football and, you know, egos do get to a side. When you get these young players, the money that these young players are on, you know, and they are superstars um, at such a young age, you know, egos are always going to fly. You know, there's egos in, in this day and age, you know, as it is, let alone when you give them money, stardom, fame and all of this so i'm not saying that's going to his head that's not what i'm saying at all um but it wouldn't surprise me if um it was because like i said when you give these players the money and all of that it comes with the territory and again i love lee rosane and i i believe he will come good for us remember this is only realistically um you know been his first couple of you know, uh, for his first season. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, and then he, um, uh, Brazil also took, uh, spoke about Lewandowski. He said, of course, we want to keep him. Uh, Lewandowski is highly uh, appreciated. The fans love him, uh, but he's our top earner at the club. Uh, we all, uh, we also have to look at our financial possibilities uh, and how much money uh, we have. Uh, I spoke to uh, Lewandowski. We also talk uh, to his agent he has a contract until 2023 we have we have all the time in the world well not really lad i get what you're saying you know that we're not going to basically we're not going to be pressured is what you're saying um but we don't really have all the time in the world lad but he's not on a five-year deal so that's that's absolute crap but I get what you're saying. Um, we have the best striker in the world and we're proud of that. We haven't uh, negotiated yet, but that's what we'll do now. Um, and yeah, it, it seems to be in the next um, one, two, three or four weeks. Um, you know, it looks that, it looks that way. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, and then um, him uh, talking about um, ruling out... Um, selling him he says uh uh we uh would you consider selling uh if barcelona came in with a 40 to 50 million offer uh and he said no no not happening uh he also says um he said so is he definitely staying um this summer he said yes he has a contract until 2023 like i said they're, they're not they're not looking to to get rid of him at all they're generally not. So that's why my stance was what it was. But it's just more the fact that at the end of the day, if Lewandowski does push his way out, you can't stop him. You just can't. Because you don't want to lose him on a free. You know, imagine losing the best player in the world on a free. And I know some people will be like, well, Barca did with Messi. But he wasn't the best player in the world then. He wasn't, you know what I mean? Um, and you, you could see my 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 thoughts on the Ballon d'Or. Um bullshit as it is you can see that but uh and then he also was speaking about uh, Neuer and Muller he said we've been very relaxed in talks over the past few weeks I hope they stay for a long uh, uh as long as they can play we had um very good talks they are cor um, cornerstones and key players, which I 100% agree with. Uh, and then uh, contracts until 2024 plus one. I said, I don't want to speak about contract details, uh, which is fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, he's not going to expose what Bayern Munich want to do. 
um, with certain things. Uh, and then um, he said we uh, he confirms the talks that Ryan of the Ryan Gravenberch thing. Uh, he says we are in talks with Ryan Gravenberch. Uh, and then they um, he was asked, are things looking good? He said, I can't say uh, anything right now. Uh, and then on Sula. He says, generally speaking, Nicholas is a great guy. The worst thing for the club is when a player of that age leaves on a free transfer. We tried everything in our power, but we didn't have the money he wanted to keep him. I'm calling bullshit, but OK, let's just, let's just skip past that. Um, and then he also spoke about um, various other things. He said, um, Pavard of Mancano and Hernandez played outstandingly in the back three yesterday. Um, he says, that gives that gives me hope. Uh, Upa especially has improved a lot in the past few weeks. I, I feel really sorry for Nicholas uh, is leaving, but we have to look forward, which I agree. It's, it's, been, it's been said that he's going. So yeah, 100% we have to look forward. Uh, and then, um, he, um, um, excuse me, on Bayern's squad getting weaker after 2020, he said, of course, after the Champions League win, it would have been great to keep all the players like Coutinho, like Perisic, but uh, we couldn't um, ruin the club financially. We can't do uh, we can't do squad planning like that, um, which I, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what it is, but it is what it is. Uh, and then he says um, on backups, he says players. Players like Rocker and Riches need more game time. Um, we have to admit Nal Guzman want, uh, wanted to win the title first. I'm firmly convinced that Rocker would start for almost uh, for almost all teams in the Bundesliga. So maybe is that a hint that he might be going out on loan to the Bundesliga rather than him being sold? I don't know. Um, take that as you will. Uh, and then um, he said, players leaving for a free, it's not just Bayern's problem. Even Mbappe will be a free agent. Player, players and agents and clubs need to find solutions. Otherwise, football will be broken. Free transfers make us clubs weaker and weaker after the, after the pandemic. It became fashionable, which I agree with. It seems these, in this day and age, it's just, I'm leaving on a free, I'm leaving on a free, I'm leaving on a free. And it, it, it's bad for football. It generally is because... It just means that clubs are going to absolutely get shit on generally. So, um, you know, but you're going to see the smart ones um, coming out. And then he was asked about Haaland. He said, we have the best strike in the world, Lewandowski. So that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and then he uh, was asked, is there a player Bayern would break the bank uh, for uh, and take a loan uh, to be able to afford? He said, that's up to... Um, superv supervisory board, I believe is how you say it, um, but uh, don't want to risk uh, the club. Uh, that uh, will continue to be our, f our philosophy our philosophy in the future. Uh, and then speaking about Nabry um, being the next player to leave Bayern on a free, he says, I, I hope not because he's a player we appreciate so do the, and so do the fans. I hope he stays here because he fits well uh, into this group. Uh, we can't imagine him without this group of players, which again, I 110% agree with, um, you know, similar to Sane. Well, I love the whole club, of course, but um, Nabry is definitely one of my favourite players uh, in there. You know, we all have our favourites. It is what it is. Uh, and then he also said, we have our philosophy. At, why can I not say that word? Philosophy at the club. Uh, we will have 14 top players in the squad uh, and a number of top talents uh, that we want to develop. We don't have the money to uh, money for 20 top uh, players like in England. We have a coach for that. Uh, our aim is still to uh, um, uh, be among the top four in Europe, which again, I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Uh, and then he said, we want to analyse everything uh, with the coach, make uh, plans and come back next year. We uh, will attack uh, properly next season. Uh, what happened uh, this year against Villarreal will not happen again. The boys will learn and do better in the future. Uh, and then that is that is that so that's going to be it for the video a longer video much longer video there will be some more content for you guys today if you guys have enjoyed though please do smash the thumbs up hit the subscribe button down below and until then i'll see you on the next one until then though mia sir mia peace out guys let me know what you think and um thank you for the constant support on the channel